Today we are recreating this iconic VFX scene from the movie Wanted. There's only one problem, I'm going to have to do it by myself. Me? Get out of here! First I need to set up the scene. I at least want some cinematic lighting so that the video just looks a little bit better. In this case I use two lights in juxtaposition of each other. One light here to light the side of my face and another light there to give me a rim light to separate me from the background. I personally use a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K with a graphic monitor on top so I can view myself in the process so that I know that I'm standing right and I don't have to go around the camera each time to look back at the footage. I use that to make the process just a little bit easier. Now all I have to do is use the same lighting setup multiple times and fill myself in different positions so that we actually have some variation in the shots. And actually we are just going to be recreating somewhat the scene of Wanted. Of course I do not have an office as big as that and it's not daylight. I don't have these big giant lights in the top to guide the perspective. And this shot was the hardest to film because in this one there's two times me. We actually have to film this shot in slow motion. I'm going to film this in 120 FPS because the BMPCC 4K has this option. That is five times slower than normal camera footage from 24 FPS. Playing two different roles at the same time actually cost me this many iterations to get it right. Now I go into DaVinci Resolve to find out if these shots actually worked out. Because if it didn't, then I'm definitely screwed. And lo and behold, it does. Sort of. And then I move on to the master shot. The shot that it's all about. The keyboard smack. I used opacity on the top layer to see through it. And in that way, I timed the shots together so that the smack actually happens at the right time. But now our footage is still on 120 FPS, which means that in our timeline, which is 24 FPS, it's five times slower. I'm going to use time remapping in DaVinci Resolve. I'm just going to press Ctrl R, and once I've pressed Ctrl R, we get new options. And right down here at the 100%, we're going to click on the arrow and add a speed point. And with this speed point, we can manipulate the speed at certain times of the clip. First, we want the keyboard smack to be at normal speed, but when the impact hits, we want it to be slow motion. Now that the slow motion looks pretty decent, I can cut myself out of this clip to place in front of the other person. We're going to create a fusion composition with these two clips in it, and add a magic mask node to the clip of the person we want to cut out. And now the magic mask pretty much does everything by itself. I only had to draw in this person, and then I had to click on this button and then it was nearly done. I think I had to do about 15 frames, which I also did with the magic mask, but I just had to draw it frame by frame and it wasn't uh, that terrible a deal. I mean, just look at the hair. And now we're going to hop into Blender to do some real work. In Blender, we have to make a tooth, a keyboard, some broken keys, and maybe even half of a keyboard so that we have a big junk flying around. The process of making a keyboard is actually quite arduous and I'm just going to speed up through this footage. But if you want to know how to do this, you can always just leave a comment. First, we'll interpret the animation of the keyboard by eye and render out the first 23 frames. On the 24th, the rigid body destruction will start. So after I've got the keyboard motion, we can now make the destruction in Blender. I used a simple cell fracture of a thousand pieces. It starts deactivated, but interacts with this animated ball. When the ball hits the keyboard, it bursts and breaks, and thus we have our render. Now we'll animate these keys by hand and make sure that they follow a pleasant trajectory. The same goes for the half-broken keyboard, which I broke, by the way, by using an icosphere with a displacement on it and then using a boolean to cut out a part of the keyboard. And it actually looks pretty rad. And now that we've got all the renders, we're going over into DaVinci to composite everything together. I didn't do a lot of compositing. I simply added the pieces to the footage, used some contrast, added some smoke that I got from YouTube. But I also added a grain effect to all these layers because I wanted to match the grain exactly to the background, as well as in color, as in size. I used this node for that and I just simply play around with the size. And as almost everything with what we do, we interpret it by eye. I added some smoke in front as well as behind the keyboard, because I think it sits a little bit better into the scene. I also added some lens blur, so that when the pieces come flying at us in the camera, it actually changes the bokeh effect of the background. 
In the color grading tab I was doubting between two color grades, one which was purple and one which was green orangey. I eventually went for the green orangey because when I look at the purple one right now, I'm like, what was I thinking? Luckily I didn't use that one, I went for the green and orange one which just feels a little bit more natural. If I look at the whites in this scene as compared to the other scene with the purple, we've got the purple lighting on the white blouse, it just looks a little bit weird. I added a vignette, played around with the colors and called it a day. Or did I? After doing all the work I realized I don't like the movement of these keys. They seem to slow down and then speed up again and slow down, it's quite unpleasant. So I went back into the original render in Blender and changed the keyframes to improve the animation and this is the final result. Hey Bodhi, we've got uh, evaluations coming up and Shut I want to give you a raise. Duck your 9-5. Are you alright Bodhi? <laughs> Who's the man? I'm the man. Bodhi, Bodhi, <gasps> I've got a VFX breakdown to make. And if you don't get me this wonder shot in time... Yes. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do with you. Alright? Take care. Anyway, I hope this VFX breakdown was useful for you. And if you want to see how I made these Star Wars VFX, I highly recommend watching this video next. <laughs>